Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. How would you like to make right decisions every time? My guest says it's simple. Would you like to learn? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> you know, I, my guest was an instructor at Rhema Bible College, and I'm, I am told by friends that graduated uh, that the best course at Rhema was what she taught, the blood covenant. Give me one nugget, Karen. Well, I think probably, you know, it's an amazing covenant. And I, if I had to give one nugget, it would probably be the fact that the blood of Jesus bought back for us everything that Adam lost. You know, the, the life is in the blood, and it was the blood of Jesus that bought back for us. And now we're in the same position with God that Adam was, because Jesus tore down the veil between man and God, eradicated our sin, and let us just walk into his throne room. You, know, you like to teach the way Jesus taught. Uh, give me uh, a couple of things Jesus taught in reference to prayer. Well, one of the things he prayed, of course, was the prayer of consecration. When Jesus faced the toughest decision of his life, he had to pray, Father, not my will, but your will be done. So if we're trying to make a decision, we want to pray that way too. Father, let your will be done in my life. But that's not to be confused with the prayer of faith which is something that change, the prayer of faith changes things. And so we don't pray if it be thy will concerning like healing, for example, because we know it's God's will to heal us. You found that when you pray the way Jesus taught to pray, you get supernatural results. Tell me about that relative of yours with the awful condition in her hand. So I was just talking with this person and all of a sudden I noticed on her hands that she had this kind of rash and they looked all red and she told me it was all over her body. She'd never had anything like that happen before, but it was making her miserable. You know, she couldn't sleep, she couldn't you know, rest and it was itchy and everything. And I said, well, you don't have to have that, you know? So I took Jesus at his word, laid hands on her. And when we parted ways, she didn't look any different, but she contacted me the next day and said, thank you. I have been healed all over my body. Oh, that's so wonderful. And there's no more rest. You know, here, here's a quote I have from you, Karen. God has plans for you. He's not keeping from you, but for you. Isn't that good news? It is. Yeah. Explain a little. Well, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, that you can have hope and an expected end. I love that verse. First of all, it tells you, A, there is a plan. Thank God. And B, somebody knows what it is. <laughs> you know, many of us are seeking around for God's plan, wondering his direction for our life. But he has a plan. Ephesians 2 says he had it before you were born. He created you for good works that you should walk in them. And so when we seek him, we can get into the plan. And that's how we follow it out and be in his perfect will for our lives. You say we can make decisions from God, which will be perfect decisions. We can know what he wants us to do every single time. And you say we have a helper. We have what I like to call the guide on the inside. The Holy Spirit is in there to lead and guide us and help us every step of the way. You teach that we really can get God's input in decisions every single time. Oh, what types of decisions? Just the, the life uh, changing ones or 
little day to day. I'd say both. You know, obviously we, we need to hear them for major things. You know, should I marry this person? Should I move to that city? Should I take this job? You know, big decisions. But then also tiny little ones. And really, we should practice with the everyday decisions. You know, Lord, should I, should I turn left or right here? Should I talk to this person or not? You know, and the Holy Spirit will give you promptings and say, go over there, do that. And if you practice listening to the Spirit, He'll lead and guide you in those small things so that you're ready to hear him in the big things and you can make those right decisions. I, I know people whose very lives were dependent on hearing God and doing what he had to say. Uh, when we come back, I want to get more of these nuggets on how we can make right decisions every time and it's simple. Be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! If you love watching our It's Supernatural! TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural! You, you talk about keys so that we can really understand yes. what God's will is. I mean, so many people are uh, almost paralyzed yeah. for fear they're going to do something wrong so they don't do anything. Yeah. And then they go their whole life doing nothing. And they had a whole destiny ahead of themselves. Yeah. One of your keys that you talk about is determine that you're going to be led by God and nothing else. Everybody that I know wants to be led by God. They want to hear His plan. They want to obey Him and move, but they don't necessarily know the, the track to take. But when we determine that we're going to be led by Him, in other words, Father, I'm not going to do anything until I hear from you, that requires several things from us. We first have to seek Him, right? And so if you're facing a major decision or you're looking for God's direction in life, you have to decide, first of all, most important, I'm going to seek God about this and nothing else. We make decisions based on money. We make decisions based on lack of money. <laughs> we make decisions based on circumstances or feelings or opinions of other people. Or we make our own pro-con list, you know. And we have to remember that like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll make your path straight. Our understanding is one thing, but we understand in a very limited way don't we? So, so uh, uh, give me an example like tragedy hits your own family. How did this play out? Yes, well, you know, in, when I was 37 years old and my first husband was 37 years old, he died. We were pastoring a church. He just was, wasn't sick, suddenly just went home to be with the Lord. My sons were 12 and 13 years old. And so you can imagine I just had major decisions to make every day, all day. Instead of taking advice from other people, which is important and good, but you need to weigh everything by what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. And so I had to spend extra, extra time in the Word of God. You know, the Bible is God talking to us. And it's how I walked out this whole, I had to take over pastoring our church and raising teenage sons, and I really needed the Word of the Lord in my life more than anything. And it, it probably, you know, um, grounded me in uh, deciding. Not, not to mention, uh, even though you sorted it out, you had to, coming from your husband uh, was a graduate of Rhema too, yes. uh, and, and coming from that background, when something like that happens, it's just not supposed to happen. Right. And uh, in addition to having sort, sorting out why your husband died suddenly and having two children to raise and pastoring a church, Yes, and so I spent that time pressing into His Word, and by that I mean I read it a lot. I meditated on it. I, you know, there's a, a scripture in Psalm 119 that says, if, Lord, if not for Your Word, I would have perished in my affliction, and that was me. I read it like a five-year-old learning to read, ran my hand down the page, because the Bible is God talking to us, and that's how we learn to recognize His voice. Tell me a little bit more about that, because that is key to recognize God's voice. How do you, you said practice, but tell me a little more about that. Well, think about it. If, if the Bible is God talking to us, then we need to hear Him 
talking to us. And if we familiarize ourselves with the Bible, we read it a lot, we'll find out how he leads people, how he guides people, what he sounds like. You know, and I and I use this analogy because I heard one time that the U.S. Treasury Department trains their agents to recognize a counterfeit bill by giving them the real bills, and they touch them, and they smell them, and they put them under a microscope, and they look at them a long time, so that they're so familiar with the real that if a counterfeit comes along, they notice it right away. And what if we, as as Christians, as believers, as people who love God, get into the Word of God so much, we understand the real, that if a counterfeit idea, you know, the devil comes along or our own voice comes along, <laughs> we recognize it right away. Now, uh, you, were, you were trying to decide something, uh, and what was God telling you to do? When I was pastoring our church after my husband passed away and God started talking to me about moving to Tulsa and I didn't want to <laughs> because I, I loved the Northwest and my family and friends were there and Tulsa is in the Midwest and you know and so I made my own pro-con list and under pro it said because God said so and under con it said because I don't want to move there and my friends and family are here and the con list was about 10 things long and the pro list was about one and if I had gone by the pro-con list I would have voted con and stayed there and been out of God's will. So we can't go necessarily by our own idea of a pro-con list. How'd it turn out? It turned out good. I moved to Tulsa and I ended up, you know, got to teach at Rama and really travel the world and preach. And so who knows where I would be if I hadn't obeyed God. If she wasn't determined to, to follow God, God and no one else. Now, what is the difference between hearing his audible voice or promptings. Everyone's looking for his audible yeah. voice. Yeah, and really most of us are to be led by the inward witness. You know, the Bible teaches us that we are a threefold being. You know, we live in a body, we have a, a soul, but we are a spirit. And the part of us that's a spirit, the born again part, is just like Jesus. It's just like God. And so then we are meant to hear his voice. He said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And so we are meant to recognize his voice, but we hear it as a prompting from the inward man, from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking to us. I like to call it a knowing in your knower. Okay, give me an example of a prompting when you were driving late at night. Yeah, one time I was on um, I-5 driving, you know, and, and in my family, if you get tired while you're driving, I was all by myself, we just pull over to the side of the road and take a nap. And so I was tired, I pulled over, I leaned the seat back and I went to sleep. And I don't know how long I'd been sleeping, but all of a sudden, the, uh, the Lord just prompted me. I got this inward witness that just woke me up and I sat both upright and, and I felt the Holy Spirit say, move now. And so I put the seat up, I started the car and I moved. And really that's the end of the story, which it turned out good because nothing bad happened. Who knows, maybe a, you know, a trucker was sleepy and he would have veered off the road right then and squashed my little Honda like a bug. And so I, you know, I listened to the Holy Spirit and he gave me that inward witness and I obeyed him. Tell me about uh, your son's experience where you learned how important it is, and listen to this, watch your mouth. Yes, that is one of the keys to, to hearing the voice of God because we need to be sure our words agree with the, the Bible, you know, because the Bible is what we're following. It's our road map for our destiny. And if we talk opposite of it, say somebody goes in their prayer closet and they say, Lord, please help me, direct me, guide me, let me know your direction for my life. And then they come out of their prayer closet and you ask them, so what are you going to do? And they go, I don't know, I can't hear from God. You know, <laughs> they just said the opposite of what they prayed. And they got the opposite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so my son, you know, he was facing graduation. He was an ORU uh, senior and everybody asked him like you ask all graduates, you know, what are you going to do when you graduate? And he didn't know. And he hated keep, to have to keep saying, right. I don't know, because he's been praying to know. And so finally one day he said to me, Mom, I've come up with the answer. When people ask me, what are you going to do after graduation? I'm going to say, I'll know when the time comes. That way he keeps so his words better. in agreement with the word. I of like God. that. Yeah. Okay. When we come back, you're going to find out one of the most important keys. And I, I, I mean, I, it's been de-emphasized in our society. And shame on you that are de-emphasizing this. It's called tongues, supernatural languages. Yes. This is where the power is. We'll be right back. We'll be right back 
to its supernatural. Karen Jensen Salisbury wants you to know how to access God's divine wisdom, provision, and protection for any situation you are facing and make the right decision every time. Call now and get Karen Jensen Salisbury's revelatory book, How to Make the Right Decision Every Time, and her powerful two-part audio CD teaching series, Getting God's Direction for Your Life and Helping Your Children Make the Right Decisions. Plus, receive her special bookmark with 10 supernatural keys on making the right decision every time. Yours. For a donation of $35, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9357. Through Karen's brand new book, which is a handbook for decision making, you will learn how much God desires to guide you every day through His Word. Discover the 10 supernatural keys, practical ways to apply God's principles for making decisions in every area of your life. Remove the pressure and fear of making wrong choices. Approach your life with confidence every day. You can make the right decision every time. At the end of every chapter, there's a Now Engage section, which has the scripture and the declarations that you can make. Through her powerful two audio CD teaching set, Getting God's Direction for Your Life and Helping Your Children Make the Right Decisions, you will learn how to clearly recognize God's voice, discover how to avoid the hidden schemes of the enemy, understand how to pray for the impossible to become reality in your life and the lives of others. Also receive this special bookmark with 10 supernatural keys on making the right decisions every time. Not only are you going to start making the right decisions every time, you're going to help everyone you know. The worst decision you can make is not calling now to get Karen Jensen Salisbury's revelatory book, How to Make the Right Decision Every Time, and her powerful two audio CD teaching series, Getting God's Direction for Your Life and Helping Your Children Make the Right Decisions. Plus, receive her special bookmark with 10 supernatural keys on making the right decision every time. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9357. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9357 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, another key for making right decisions every time simply is praying in a supernatural language, or the Bible refers to it as unknown tongues. Tell me why that's so important. Well, it's your spirit praying directly to God. You know, the Bible says when we pray in tongues, we don't have an understanding in our minds. And so there's so many benefits to praying in tongues. First of all, it makes you bold. Second of all, it gives you, it helps you pray out the mysteries of the future. You know, he who prays in tongues is praying directly to God, whereas mysteries, and you know, the future is a mystery to us, right? And so if you're seeking God's direction or asking him for right decisions, when you pray in the spirit or pray in other tongues, you're praying out things in your future. Like when you get there, it's ready for you already set up by God. And another in, you know, Romans 8, 26, it says that it, the Spirit helps us pray when we don't know what to pray for as we ought. I don't know about you, but there's lots of times I run into things when I know somebody should pray, but I don't know what to pray for. Yeah, well, you know the symptoms, but you don't know the causes. Wouldn't it be great to be able to pray precise prayers yes. from the Spirit of the living God to change the circumstance in your life or a loved one's life. You know, I think about Peter on the day of Pentecost. This is a guy who denied the Lord three times and was probably feeling guilty and was feeling weak, but he went to the upper room with the disciples. When the Holy Spirit fell, they all spoke in other tongues. And then Peter preached and won 3,000 people to the Lord that day. Well, I, my <laughs> message to you is start praying in yes, tongues. absolutely. But you, you tell people, uh, and I think this is phenomenal. When they go to sleep, go to sleep praying in tongues. Uh, explain a little. I was in children's ministry for like 21 years. And so I got lots of kids filled with the Spirit praying in other tongues, which is so exciting. And I used to tell them, guys, you got to practice. And so I gave them a practice time. Every night when you lay your head down on the pillow, just pray in tongues. And then uh, adults heard me teaching kids that, and they would come back to me and say, you know, I go to sleep praying in tongues, and I wake up knowing stuff. <laughs> well, the Bible says you have to become like a little child. It's true. Uh, pray for people right now that are born from above, because that's the only requirement, 
born again. You, you believe Jesus died for your sins. His blood washed them away. You've repented and you ask Jesus to be your Lord. If that's you, pray for them to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And by the way, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues, but you could speak in tongues if you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, okay. and it's easy. You know, this is a gift from God. When somebody wants to give you a gift and they're holding it out like this, what do you do? You just take it. You don't have to qualify for it. You don't have to earn or deserve it. It's just something given to you by God. And God has put his Holy Spirit on the earth ever since Acts chapter two, verse four, ever since the day of Pentecost for us, for a gift. And it's not hard to receive it. In fact, all you have to do is just pray this prayer with me. Father God. Father God. I ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. I receive it now. I receive it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's that easy. Now, you, but you can't talk English right. without cooperating with your mouth and your lips, right? You can't speak from it's not coming from here anymore, and then this will rebel. It's coming from here, your belly. Therefore, you'll not hear it until you do your part. God will do his. You can't speak in English unless you articulate the words coming from your brain. You can't speak in, well, I don't know how. Perfect, it's unknown. Right. You start speaking as quickly as you can, a language you haven't been instructed, like a little child. Right now. Now, if you don't start speaking, no one else will do it. Someone's ear was just opened in Jesus' name. Hey, this really is supernatural, Karen. Uh, now, what if someone has missed it? They know they've missed it. Are they finished? No. <laughs> Good. And, and haven't we all? You know, of I think nobody's done everything perfectly. And the devil would love you to believe that now you're disqualified, you know, or that was your only chance and it's over for you. But he's a liar. You know, and if the, if the Bible shows us anything, it shows us people who got another chance. You know, look at Moses. He killed uh, an Egyptian and he thought his time for being a deliverer was over, but no, God's plan for him was go kept going. Look at David. Look at David. We're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, sleeping with somebody else's wife, getting her pregnant and killing her husband. I mean. You think you did bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. And yet even the New Testament still calls him a man after God's own heart. He repented. You know, and, and so if you've missed it, if you feel like you've gotten off track, I'm telling you, God is big enough to get you back on track. Well, I want you to pray right now for people, right now. Okay. Father, we just, we just come to you. I come to you on behalf of those who have, who have maybe missed it, maybe gone off track, maybe gotten in the wrong direction. And Father, if, if I just pray that you give them divine impartations and truth and revelation, that they can ask you for forgiveness and they can go on, that your plan for their life is still coming to pass, that what you created them for will, is still your plan for their lives. I pray over those people. I pray that you are able to just receive God's forgiveness and keep on going because he knows how to get you right back on track in Jesus name. And my way of saying the same thing is just throw off the dust and the horrible things and say, thank you for your blood. I repent, yes, Jesus. I now you have to repent. Don't get me wrong. That means a change of action. You're sorry. You repent and I'm going to tell you, you will not miss a step of what God has for you yes, in your life. Yes. You are ready to walk into your destiny. And God told me to tell you that right now. That's his message for you. Everyone faces challenges morning and night to make the right decision on things big and small things that affect your health, God's divine protection, your finances, career decisions, which college or child should attend. As a mother or father, a housewife, a business person, what if there is a way that you can clearly hear from God and make the right decision every time and even help your children or grandchildren do the same? Karen Jensen Salisbury wants you to know how to access God's divine wisdom, provision and protection for any situation you're facing and make the right decision every time. 
Call now and get Karen Jensen Salisbury's revelatory book, How to Make the Right Decision Every Time, and her powerful two-part audio CD teaching series, Getting God's Direction for Your Life, and Helping Your Children Make the Right Decisions. Plus, receive her special bookmark with 10 supernatural keys on making the right decision every time. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9357. Everywhere I go, I meet people who are facing big decisions in their life, some, some big, some small, but they're not quite sure how to hear from God to make those decisions. So this book is a how-to book. I'm a how-to girl. I want to get the message across to you how you can take the Word of God and listen to the Spirit of God and get answers for every decision in your life. Through Karen's brand new book, which is a handbook for decision making, you will learn how much God desires to guide you every day through His Word. Discover the 10 supernatural keys, practical ways to apply God's principles for making decisions decisions in every area of your life. Remove the pressure and fear of making wrong choices. Approach your life with confidence every day. Understand how you can make the right decision every time. At the end of every chapter, there's a now engage section, which has the scripture and the declarations that you can make to take it for your own. Through her powerful two audio CD teaching set, getting God's direction for your life and helping your children make the right decisions, you will learn how to clearly recognize God voice. Discover how to avoid the hidden schemes of the enemy. Understand how to pray for the impossible to become reality in your life and the lives of others. As parents, we want our children to walk in God's plan for their life, walk in their divine destiny. And there's just so many clues in the Word of God. So on this CDs, I tell parents how to help your children make the right decision. Also receive this special bookmark with 10 supernatural keys on making the right decisions every time. Well, here's your choice. You can run and find a man and woman of God and say, give me a word, or you can make the right decision every time. God wants you to grow up. This is so basic and so needed that not only are you going to start making the right decisions every time, you're going to help everyone you know. The worst decision you can make is not calling now to get Karen Jensen Salisbury's revelatory book, How to Make the Right Decision Every Time, and her powerful two audio CD teaching series, Getting God's Direction for Your Life, and Helping Your Children Make the Right Decisions. Plus, receive her special bookmark with 10 supernatural keys on making the right decision every Every time. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9357. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9357 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest is considered by many, uh, Bill Johnson for one, the most accurate prophet he has ever met. Now, a few years ago, my guest had a dream about the future of America. What he has to share, I've never heard publicly before, but for the first time, he's been given permission to share it publicly. Would you like to hear it? Yes. <laughs> Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.